Hi, I'm Carlos Marin, author of the bestseller, The Ultimate Success Formula, and welcome to another episode of Your Unlimited Life. Today, I'm going to talk about another super impacting topic that actually dominates your life and the results that you produce in it. This is actually a follow-up to last week's show about reading other people's minds, which is really about reading your own mind, which is really about knowing and identifying what it is that you have in your mind predominantly and what you're thinking about predominantly because that's what's producing the results in your life. See, for years people have always been asking me why they do what they do. How come they can't get themselves to do the things that they know they should do in order to achieve the success and the happiness that they want in their lives and they can't stop doing the things that are creating the unhappiness and the lack of success and the lack of wealth and riches that they really want. And so here's the secret ladies and gentlemen. What we think about constantly, now listen to this word, listen to this word. What we think about constantly dominates, dominates our lives. We do what we do because our actions come from our motives and our motives come from our beliefs and recurring thoughts. That's right, recurring thoughts. That means they happen over and over and over and over and over again. Our dominant thoughts and beliefs literally take control of our lives and create it and maintain it. And you're going to hear this word from me a lot from here on out automatically because it's automatic. You see, here's how, how it works. Our dominant thoughts, which again, another word for those is beliefs, but I want to come at this from various different angles so you fully, fully get it and understand it because we're going to start using this and manipulating this in order to create massive results for you. So our dominant thoughts create a mental atmosphere, a mental atmosphere all around us. And I say all around us because my hands can only reach this far, but it really is all around us like it, it dominates depending upon the strength of your mindset. I mean, it can fill your house, it can fill your place of business, it can fill rooms that you go into. Uh, I mean, places where, you know, some of the most powerful personal uh, uh, speakers in the world fill auditoriums with their mental atmosphere. Some powerful spiritual leaders fill cities with their mental atmosphere. And I, I know this may sound weird to some of you, but you just need to understand that our mindsets create an atmosphere around us and that atmosphere dominates our lives and keeps our lives in place, our results in place. This atmosphere creates and ma maintains your state of life, your conditions, your circumstances, and it attracts people that resonate with it and repels those that don't, again, automatically. Remember, in our last show, we talked about the law of correspondence. The law of correspondence says, as within, so without. And as without, so within. And this means that this law reflects itself in your actual external conditions, in my actual external conditions, in all of our actual, actual external conditions. It reflects itself and is what creates your mental atmosphere, your habitual and automatic mindset which fills the space in, with you li in which you live. So if you look at the life that you have today, the people that you have in it, your conditions, your circumstances. Look all around, right? When we talked about the law of correspondence last week, we said you can know what people are thinking by the conditions they have in their life, by their circumstances, by their situations, by the people they have in it, by the words that they say. So now we want to look at this, how it relates to you. So look at your life, the life that you have today, the people that you have in it, your conditions and your circumstances. And let's, let's go through this a little bit so that we can determine what we need to do 
to get you from where you are right now, which is not where you want to be, to where you truly desire to be. So let's first take a look at your financial situation. Is your financial situation positive? Are you moving forward? Are you expanding and growing? Are you making headway towards your goals, towards your dreams, towards what you would like your financial situation in life to be? Or are you in neutral? Are you like not moving forward, not moving back? It seems like no matter what you do, it just kind of stays the same. Or is it negative? Does it seem to be going backwards? Does it seem to be getting worse instead of getting better? Whatever the case may be, it reflects your mental atmosphere. It reflects your mindset. It re reflects your predominant thinking. This is why for years I have told people, associate with people who are where you want to be. Because over the course of the next several years, the only changes that will come about in your life will be directly proportional to the people that you associate with and the books and videos and information that you put into your mind. And so, what's your financial situation look like? Are you moving forward or are you falling behind? Or are you staying in neutral? Look at your business, profession, your work situation. Is it improving? Is it flat? Or are you moving backwards? Again, Every time that you look at each of these situations, and you should come back to this video, and you should watch it again, and you should ask yourself these questions, and you should write down the answers to these questions on paper, because it's going to give you a lot of insight into your life, right? Look at your relationships. Your relationships with your life partner, your spouse, your soulmate, your girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other. Look at your relationship with your kids. If you have any or grandkids, look at your relationships with your friends. Look at your relationships with your associates, your business associates. Look at those relationships and are they, are they improving on a consistent basis? Are they flat, staying pretty much the same? Or are they regressing, going backwards? Look at your physical body. Look at your your, 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 I mean, and we're going to split this up because, I mean, look at, we live in a day and time today. People are interested in the way they look. So we're going to talk about health too, but look at your physical body. Do you like the way your physical body looks? Are you overweight? Do you, are, are you in shape? Are you flabby? Are you a skinny fat person or a fat skinny person? Or are, 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 are you staying neutral? Are you falling behind each and every year? Are you aging? What do you think of your physical body? How do you feel about your physical body? Because all of these things are very, very, very telling in many areas. Then let's look at your health. Is your health improving? Is it staying neutral? Or is it getting worse with every year that goes by? Now remember, we live in a society that says that we're aging and because we're aging, we're supposed to be deteriorating. We're supposed to be getting worse and worse and worse and worse. But there are cultures that don't believe that and they live to 120 and 130 years of age. Some of them have children into their hundreds. That's right, into their hundreds. So it's all about the mindset. It's all about the, the, the predominant beliefs, right? Now, look at your predominant emotional states. What emotional states do you predominantly live in? And are they positive, neutral, or negative? I mean, think about this, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this one because this one is of key major importance because this one, your emotional states, believe it or not, is what affects all the other areas of your life. So, do you live in stress? Do you live in anxiety? Do you live in resentment? Do you live in anger? Or maybe judgment, unforgiveness, jealousy? hatred, depression, right? If you live predominantly in those states or experience those emotional states on a consistent basis, you will have physical and mental repercussions from those. You will have sickness and disease, dis-ease comes about from those emotions because those emotions are not Ease. They are not graceful. They're not uh, things that make you feel good. They make you feel bad, right? 
And so if you live in those kind of emotions, you're going to suffer physically and emotionally about it, due to those emotions. Just like if you, if you have feelings of unworthiness, if you have feelings of, of not being good enough, if you have feelings of, of thinking you don't deserve, whether it be wealth, whether it be um, uh, success, whether it be happiness, whether it be love or being in good, harmonious, uh, loving relationships, whatever you don't think you deserve or are unworthy of or are not good enough for will avoid you. you will, I mean, you will not experience those things. So you've got to understand what emotional states you live in. On the flip side of the coin, do you live in emotional states of peace, harmony, forgiveness, acceptance, happiness, love, positive expectancy, joy, confidence, power, abundance, success? Do you feel you are worthy of success and wealth and riches? Do you feel you deserve wealth, riches, happiness, love, abundance? Do you feel you're good enough to, to have all of the good things in life? If you do, those things will be attracted to you. And so, now most people don't live in just one side or the other. They go back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And that's why their, their life seems to be like a neutral. It seems to be like, you know, two steps forward and three steps back, three steps forward and two steps back. And it seems like you can't get ahead. And every time you start moving forward, something happens. Okay? So the key is to understand where we are and where we're living because that determines what our mental atmosphere is. Now, I want you to understand something because people go, oh my gosh, then, how, then am I stuck here? Carlos, what am I going to do? Am I stuck here? No, you're not stuck. You're not stuck. There's a way to move on and move forward and move through wherever you may be. Now watch this because here, you know, the, the answer to this is going to be somewhat easier than you might even think. Studies. In neuroscience, psychology, positive psychology today are showing, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that people with compelling goals, right? Well, but let me put it this way, that people without compelling goals, that people that have no goals, they suffer more depression, anxiety, sickness than those with exciting visions for the future. So the people with the compelling goals, with the ex exciting vision, with big dreams for the future, they are happier, they are more successful, they make more money. This is now proven scientific fact. This is not just stuff of personal development books. This has scientifically been studied. They are happier, more successful, they have better relationships, they make more money, they have less sickness than those who don't have compelling goals. Ceci and I actually have friends that work with troubled teens and the research in that field plus the real world experience is showing that those those troubled teens, those, those teens that get into trouble, that, that uh, you know, get into drugs and teenage sex and, and get into way more difficult situations than others tend to be those that do not have goals. Those that do have goals, those that do have plans for the future, those who are excited about the future and going in a certain direction, they get into way less trouble, they, they have way less problems than those without the goals. So what does this tell you, ladies and gentlemen? What does this tell you? You know, for years I've been telling people that, that we need, we need to have a clear vision of where we're going. And beyond that, I've been telling people that we need to have big, huge, powerful dreams. Powerful dreams that compel us, that move us. I mean, what is motivation except a motive so compelling, so strong, so powerful that it literally compels you. It moves you to take action. And so, what I want to do is, I'm going to give this to you in bite 
bite-sized chunks. I want you to, to take in what we talked about here today because we're going to be going into a, a format here very soon that is going to be interactive. I've been playing with, with doing live stuff on, on live stream for the past couple years and now we're moving over to YouTube Live. And I'm, I'm interested and committed to turning this show into a live show so that I can teach for 10 or 15 minutes and then we can bring people on live in the show to ask questions, to deal with their problems, with their issues, with their things, live on the show, help people to resolve and overcome their problems. and. I mean, I think that's going to have a huge impact on millions of people's lives around the world. So today is kind of a setup for this. I want you to understand that our predominant thoughts create this mental atmosphere which tends to, listen to this, consume our mindset and create the life we live automatically. This is why it's so important to know our purpose in life and have a huge dream. So on the next show, we're going to talk about the almost magical and transformative power of a great vision and super compelling dream in our lives. How it will literally transform and revolutionize your life, your thinking, and every part of your life. So we're, we're finishing the prep work to start doing this show live very soon, within the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Our test hopefully will prove us out that we can go live and on the air every week in the next couple of weeks. So please, please, please share this program with everyone you love and join me on my mission to empower millions of people to know their true inner power, to be free and live their dreams. So until then, God bless you and yours and live your unlimited life.